Today we are going to program the Cobra 10 from Castle Creations. That's it. That's the fucking intro. I have already booted up the Castle Link version 2. I have already put this little device on there, the Castle Link version 4. I don't know. It doesn't even say which version it is on it, which is sort of unfortunate. Castle, if you're listening, you need to label them 1, 2, 3, and 4 at this point, or at least four and three whichever ones you're producing so i just picked it up off the bench it connects we'll see how fast it is connected into your device let's just watch it here cycle device not found plug it back in they do have ground labeled which is your dark brown is there a dark brown or a light brown i don't know there you go it's connected and it says cobra 10 so let's first walk through what i've already done to this or we could send can we send uh let's go back to defaults i'll just reset everything one thing that i have noticed is this 32-bit ese takes a little longer than the old ones of course 32-bit there's a lot more going on we would hope all right basic auto lipo 3.2 volts a cell with the reverse we want crawler reverse in a crawler. Yes, BEC voltage, yeah, yeah, let's stick at 5.5. This is a TRX-4. It's gonna smoke if we, if we don't. Disable idle beeps. Yeah, I'm gonna disable these because I learned that when you have the hold enabled, the hold actually lets go when it beeps. I don't want that, and the beeps are annoying anyways. Power, start power. Uh, we are crawling. We usually would do a high power on there. Let's see what they tell us. If you can see the screen or not, I don't know. Top quality batteries, blah, blah, blah. Uh, very slow, heavy rock crawler setups. Sure, high. We're going to put that on high. Max power, 100%. Reverse, 100%. This is a crawler. Punch control. I always recommend 30% of punch control. That way, you're not going to have weird brownouts when you just punch it. It gives you a little bit of ramp, not really perceptible amount of ramp, but punch control, 30% break break them out yeah, we're gonna crawl it we're never gonna see this break lockout time zero seconds this is effectively instantaneous reverse as you can see reverse to forward break amount is now with the break lockout time at zero let's see let's go back to here okay we don't even get to select that go back to zero sorry if the screen is not refreshing fast enough drag break oh we want drag break all right Full on break, drag break ramp. We want a mm, either a fast or a medium. Let's just go with fast. That way, when you let go, there's a little bit of down ramp, and it's not just a uh, lock up. Cool. Yeah, we'll go back to break. Break amount fifty percent. Since we got a crawler full on, you're never going to be able to see a break. It's you're, you're just not going to get into breaking. Throttle dead band, uh, doesn't matter. Auxiliary wire mode, I am not using it on this TRX-4, but normally on a crawler, if you have an extra channel, you would use that for max drag brake. Uh, drag brake adjustment right here. Oh, rock race crawler mode, interesting. Hill hold mode enabled. I'm going to go back to about a medium with this setup. This is a 2700 kV Polar Pro. It's got pretty low resistance, so you don't want to go too high with this. It also depends on the voltage that you're using. I'm using a 3 cell. I can probably boost this up to high on 3 cell, but on 4 cell, I want to back down to medium. Motor direction normal. Mm, yeah, it's good right now. Current limiting disabled. Yeah, we don't need that right now. In the last video, you saw us crawling outside and there was a, a dead space in the throttle where it was going faster than it was going slower and I couldn't get anything in between. Y'all made some pretty good suggestions that I either get out of smart sense and go to censored only or we get rid of the uh, sensorless motor timing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it on smart sense. I am going to keep it on the normal 10 degrees of motor timing and we are just gonna see what happens with that and then i'll do a little bit of tests so throttle curve i always like to pull Ugh, not linear no curve we're gonna pull 30 percent throttle uh, or i'm sorry 30 percent 
output to 70% input. There we go. They actually have them labeled on this one this time. So when I'm giving 70% throttle pull, it's giving me 30% output speed. That's it. Oh, they got a mouse location on here too. Neat. All right, we're going to save that curve. Oh no, and actually we just have to update the device. I see what they're saying. All right, brake curve. Well, we're never going to hit brakes. Ugh, go back to curve. Why would they ever have linear as the default? I don't know. All right, 70, 30, boom, right there. Nice, nice, nice. Now, if you wanted even more gentle than uh, linear again, anyways, if you wanted something that's even more gentle instead of uh, 70, 30, you would do a 70, 20 like that. But I'm going to do 70, 30. I think it's plenty, plenty good. All right, software, we are on the most up to date because I know that I am. Now we are going to update. We're going to send settings to the device. There we go. Then I'm going to do a little bench test here. We'll see if it's going in between the, the two different little speeds. I know it is because I've already used these settings, but for basic rock crawling use, this is going to be the settings that you want. There we go. And I'm running out of room on my bench. Oh no. Now, where'd I put my radio? Down here, all the way down here. Since we're inside, my apologies. A warning of the upcoming loudness. So what we're looking for is that transition in between the low speed startup and the running. I'm not, I'm not changing my throttle at all. All right, so it's still doing it. I barely changed my finger and it went down, barely changed my finger, went back up. Pretty big difference between the two. First thing I'm going to try is to get it into censored only mode. Personally, I think that's a very bad call. Censored only is not nearly as efficient. And on a four pole, you're going to have some heat problems at, at higher RPMs. And this one being a 3500 Polar Pro on 3S, it is spinning a lot of RPMs. So where is this going to be? An advanced maybe? Nope. Uh, power? Basic? Uh, motor? There we go. Mm, smart sense. Let's first try sensors only. Update. <clears throat> Ta-da. I'm guessing this is a Castle Link 4 because that updated pretty fast. Now we try. Still there. Yep. You can probably hear, I don't know if you can hear over all the drivetrain noise, but you can hear it switching between, I'm barely moving my finger, like not even perceptible amount. And it's switching between those two frequencies. Oh, really? <laughs> all right, so that didn't solve it. Let's try motor timing. I have a feeling that this, with my particular motor, I, I did see in the comments that y'all said it wasn't nearly as bad as with a slate. I'm sure they, they tuned with a slate. But it sounds to me like they're switching between two different frequencies. So they're dithering. It's called dithering. I don't know why it's called dithering. Um, but, uh, all right, so we're going to have to go. That didn't work, so we're going to have to go back to smart sense and... Oh, well now the timing is on lowest as the default. Okay. At uh, any rate, so when you s change your switching frequency on a motor, it changes the effective 
efficiency of the entire system as well as the effective PWM. And the PWM is what gives you your speed. But the dithering is how fast your MOSFETs are switching on and off. So it sounds like, I mean, we could probably throw a scope on this to find out, but it sounds like it's starting at around 8K switching frequency. And then it's adjusting up somewhere between 13 and 18K. And the difference in those is what's give us the difference in speed. And there's really no way around it unless you have a very smooth transition on dithering. But what it's doing is it's forcing that, that dither transfer in between these two speeds. And so we're getting a pretty wide RPM jump when it does that. They could extend out the dithering over a larger PWM range. Still doing it. Barely let off. And you can't, you're not even gonna be able to see the changes of my finger because the trigger itself isn't moving. It's the output of the trigger is changing just because I'm adding and taking away a little bit of pressure to it, but the actual trigger is not moving because it's a sticky tracks trigger. Yep. Can't, can't tune that out right now. So I'm assuming they're going to have to make an update on that. What is up with that? Whatever. Uh, <laughs> maybe the voltage is too low. Uh, I'm going to run through just one more time to make sure that I didn't, I don't know, overlook something. But so far, you know, this is our basic tune that we would definitely want for crawling. But so far, it appears that I'm not able to tune that out with my motor. Again, with the Castle one, it's probably going to be less noticeable. They more than likely tuned that dithering to that, I would assume. Maybe they didn't. Maybe it's just kind of a we're tuning it based on our dead times that we have to hit. Which is usually why you would dither is you've only got so much time that you can switch a MOSFET on and off. And if you want to get a lower PWM rate, i.e. a lower startup on a motor, a lower RPM for a motor, then you have to reduce your frequency of switching. And it's, it, it's really the only way to do it. So that dithering is there for a reason. And, and I'm talking about this as a typical six step style commutation. When you get into FOC, it's completely different. When you get into how we start up with the AM32, it's completely different because it's forcing it with all three phases and not just two phases, but with a normal six step, you're only using two phases. And so you, you can't, it's just a little different. That's a video for another time. All right. So we've got the motor timing at the lowest for sensorless. Uh, the smart sense brushless is where we were. Man, there's really nothing else that I can do here to change this. So it's as good as it'll get. But otherwise, we'll run back through here real quick what we want to do. Uh, we're in a crawler, so we want crawler reverse. Your BEC voltage, make sure that it's set to something that everything can handle. The Traxxas units are notorious for burning up on anything higher than 5.5 or 6, so I'm going to keep it at 5.5. I don't want to burn things up. All right, start power high because we're in a crawler. Max power 100% because we want to go fast. Reverse percentage 100% because I'm in a crawler and I want to be able to catch myself if I'm falling over backwards, so we want full throttle there. Punch control 30%. We want punch control just to keep brownouts from happening. I always recommend 30%. The smaller your battery, the more punch control you may have to use. Brake. We're never even going to hit use brake, but brake lockout time. We want zero seconds so that we have instantaneous reverse. If you don't put this at zero seconds, your rig will sit before it reverses and I'm in a crawler. So I want instantaneous reversing. So zero seconds on that drag brake, hundred percent crawler full on drag brake ramp. As I said before, fast ramp, it's pretty good. You could do a medium ramp if your rig is really heavy and wants to nose over more. Uh, if your motor is smaller, you can get away with very, very fast ramps. And the larger the motor, the slower you're going to need to ramp just because it will lock up instantaneous. The larger the motor, the more braking power it has, the more drag brake that it will be able to do in an instant. So generally, this fast is a pretty good setting. A medium if you're finding yourself still going end over end when you release your throttle. Throttle dead band, yeah, maybe a cheap radio, you got to increase that. We don't really need to do that, none. 
auxiliary wire mode if i was crawling with a radio that would support it then i would do drag brake adjustment or rock race slash crawler mode which is like drag brake adjustment but it uh takes off it gives you like braking as well like so yeah that's almost another video motor motor direction you can change if it's going in the wrong direction you can't change your radio current limiting disabled because uh, we don't need that in a crawler anyways motor type smart sense brushless in my opinion this is the best way if it's a censored or sensorless brushless you put it on this and it'll make sure that it always works no matter what and you'll get the efficiency of sensorless at your higher rpms but the startup control of censored at lower rpms sensorless motor timing honestly i should probably put this back to normal because it's going to have a nice efficiency and everything it did not get what i was trying to do which was tuning out that weird band in our throttle range so i'm bringing that back to 10 percent. i'm going to just update right now before i forget you'll have less heat when you have this optimized and a four pole isn't as sensitive to the timing as a two pole would be and this is a four pole this particular one logging ah let's forget about that for now <laughs> Uh, the nice thing about this new unit, the 32-bit unit, is it would just overwrite your old stuff when it gets full. Instead of being like, I can't do anything, it just continuously overwrites. Uh, and there's a lot of logging here. Having everything on here, almost two hours at 5 hertz, that's pretty good. Um, can we change the hertz? Uh, interesting that you can tell which orientation of the controller. I've got mine sitting sideways, which doesn't, uh, th that's not, <laughs> yeah, that's not one of their options here. All right, sample frequency, nice. We can go from one hertz up to 20 hertz. The higher your frequency rate of sampling, then the better your resolution is going to be for logging. Mm, honestly, if I'm going to do something like that at 20 hertz, then all I care about is going to be like ripple voltage or current or some combination of those all the rest of it's going to be not really useful if you're racing this is for crawlers specifically all right back to the throttle curves 70 percent at 30 same for the brake same for the reverse 70 percent input gives me 30 percent output Software, save and print, not really useful to go over all that again, but always make sure that your software is up to date because generally it's going to run best with a Castle controller. So there you go. I hope that answers some questions that you may have on these. They pretty much are the same as any other Castle controller. And the only thing is I couldn't get that, that weird glitchy throttle space tuned out. I was kind of hoping that I could, but we can't. So I was going to go back out on the rocks and test it out, but I really don't need to because I can tell on the bench that it is still doing what it was doing before. So yeah, there we go. I will give the folks at Castle a little buzz and give them a little prod, see if they can change that dithering. Maybe they can extend that dithering to a larger range instead of just having it go. I mean, it's basically like we're getting two frequencies that are right against each other on that throttle range. And so the motor speed is whoop, it's, it's, it's advancing obviously it's advancing between the two in a way that is not controllable so there we go that is how you castle link a cobra 10 <laughs> uh, i'm starting to forget all the names of things that's how you program your cobra 10 on castle link version 2 this time with the castle link 4 itself the little chip wherever the chip went into my hand is where it went right there so there you go if you got any questions leave them down below i'll do my best to get to them or somebody else can help you out in the comments because they're going to have a lot more experience as we are a collective hive mind than i will by myself and that really has been helping out lately so leave your comments on other people's comments down below and help us all out and in the meantime thanks for tuning in have a great day You've made it to the end of the video. Hopefully that means you liked what you saw. If you want to help out the channel, you can like, subscribe, and definitely comment down below. We would like to hear new ideas from you, so be sure you let us know what you'd like to see. There are some other suggestions probably floating by my head right now that you can check out. And otherwise, we appreciate your support and your help growing the channel.